Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I hope all is well. I've been engaged for almost a year now, and since the beginning, I did not want to be with this guy. I know him very well, as he's my first cousin. I prefer him to stay that way. I was pressured by my dad and uncle to accept the engagement, and that I would be embarrassed, and I would be embarrassing the family if I would refuse to accept my dad's wishes, and also to bring him to America. I even tried to talk and chat with him to see if my heart would sway. But it didn't, and I just found myself thinking about other guys as my potential husband. I even told him that I do not want to marry him, but he doesn't care. The situation has been weighing down or uh, taking over my mind, and I just want to call it off, but I'm so scared. I've done istikhara and I've made dua so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put his love in my heart. I know that love isn't all about marriage, but there can't be marriage without love and understanding. I don't want to disappoint my dad, but I want to do what I believe is best for me. I'm sorry for the length and shukran. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your fear easy. May Allah give you the necessary sabr, the necessary strength, and the necessary courage and bravery to deal with this type of situation. I would say to you in brief, dear sister in al-Islam, uh, you not loving a man is one thing. You disliking him is something else. You not having really super strong emotions and feeling for him And you not having no feelings for him No emotions for him I don't want to marry him As you said in the question I don't want to marry this guy I don't want to marry this guy That's a strong word Okay So there's a huge difference in the two Somebody may go into a marriage Saying that you know He's a nice brother I think he has a good dean He has a good job Alhamdulillah he can take care of me. He's a responsible person. He lives in a nice house, a nice apartment, and has a nice car, nice job. He's responsible. It's not all about money, but he can feed me. Okay, he's not a, a loser. All right, he's, he's a responsible type of person. Alhamdulillah. He's handsome. He's cute. He comes from a good family. So on and so on and so forth. He's strong. Whatever the case may be. Whatever you like in a husband. Okay, he has muscles. Whatever the case may be. All right. Just being realistic. All right. What a, what a woman likes in a man. He's knowledgeable. He has a man. He, whatever the case may be. I really don't love him, I don't like him that much, but I feel that he's nice looking, or he's intelligent, or he's kada, or he's kada. So, inshallah, we'll work on the marriage, as you know, we'll, we'll grow with each other, the love will enhance, so on and so forth. That's one thing, that's one thing, that's one scenario. And the next scenario is, I do not like this guy. I don't like this guy. So obviously the sister has a dislike, a distaste, for this brother in her heart, in her mind, in the, okay? So I would not advise you to marry him. I would advise you to speak to your father humbly, but not compromising on your position. Abby, I can't marry this man. I do not love him. I do not like him. I do not want to be with him. He's not my type. It's going to be a disaster. It's going to be miserable. We're going to have children. I'm not going to give him his rights. I'm going to be a disobedient wife, etc. Plead to your father and tell him I cannot marry someone, Abby, that I want to be with. It's America. This is 2016, going on 2017. Things have changed. Things are different. All right. We're not in a village in in in, in Pakistan. We're not in a village in in uh, in, in you know in, in Ghana or or or, or 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 Gambia or wherever you come from, whatever uh, a country that a Muslim originally migrated from or his parents or her parents migrated from. And I'm not saying this about anybody's nationality or race or background. We're just making examples, which is clear. All right. Okay, so this is very, very important. We're not home in our country. This is America, this is New York City, this is Philadelphia, this is Baltimore, Maryland. Things are different. We live in New Jersey. Things are different. You cannot expect me to be with this man. I do not like the way he looks. I do not I find him attractive at all. I do not like the way he talks, the way he smells. I don't like anything about him. And you want me to be with him and be obedient and have children and to sleep with this man on a, every day, every night. It's very difficult and it's very harmful. So your father and your uncle, these men, they should be concerned for your well-being and not for the well-being of the family. Are you going to be happy? Are you going to be pleased? Are you going to be content with this man that you have to sleep with and have children by and live with? The family is nice, it's peachy, they can visit, but the family is not going to be with you when you're alone with that man and you don't want to be with him. So that's what you have to tell him just like that. There's no sugarcoating it. There's no glazing it. There's no beating around the bush. It's just that simple. And your father is not allowed to marry you if you dislike that man and you don't want to be with that man. Everybody clear on this, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So therefore, uh, once again, your father is not allowed to marry you off and you don't want to be married off. As it's mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, one narration collected by Imam Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah, uh, that the Messenger of Allah والسلام, he gave the option to a girl who was coerced to marry. Another narration in which the girl came to the Messenger of Allah والسلام, and she said uh, that, uh, that my father only married me off to raise his base status, his mean social class or social status. She married, he married me off to somebody that has money, someone that's rich, someone that's strong, someone that's a warrior, whatever the case may be. But I didn't want to marry him. I didn't want to marry him. So the Messenger of Allah, والسلام, you know, obviously, uh, he spoke to the father, all right, and he gave her the option. And she said that I'm pleased. I'm happy with what my father did. It's all right. But I want to know that the fathers do not, I want the women to know that the fathers do not have a right to do this. That the fathers do not have a right to do this. To marry off a girl who's of age. She's of age. She's not a little girl. She's of age. 18, 20, 25, 30. The father cannot marry off to someone that she doesn't want to be with. So I don't think this is the case here. I don't think this is, you know, the case is that extreme. All right. But the father wants you to marry you. Or wants, wants, you, to, wants you to marry this man. The uncle is pressuring you. The family is pressuring you. Oh, he's a good guy. It's your cousin. And so on and so forth. If you don't, if you're not pleased with him, don't marry him, and do not allow anyone to force you to be with a man that you do not like, that you do not love. Why not? Because marriage is all about love. No, because the Western, modern concept of marriage—you have to date someone for years, sleep with them, date with them, all right, get to know them for years, then you are totally in love with them. No, 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 doesn't mean that. But it's going to be a disaster if you marry that man and you don't like him from day one. And as I said before, there's a difference between you not having that much desire for him and you disliking him. Except, or with exceptions to the case in which the man has exceptional character. All right? He's a beautiful dean. And perhaps he isn't that attractive. Perhaps he doesn't look how you want your husband to look or whatever because he doesn't have that much money. And then later on, as time goes on, Allah puts the love in your heart. That's a different story. That's a different story. But I don't think that's the case with this question. And obviously, as we spoke many times before, the clash and the battle, the war of culture versus quote unquote modernity, Western values, Eastern values, Middle Eastern values, all right? My family, like I said, is from the Far East. My family's from the Middle East. My family's from India. My family's from North Africa, but I live in New Jersey. It's like night and day, all right? Unfortunately, it's like water and oil. So anything that is not mandatory in Islam, Anything that's not an Islamic obligation and there's room to mix, to marry, to compromise it, to make it all harmonized at the end, it should be done as long as it doesn't go against the deen. Please pay close attention to my words. As long as it doesn't go against the religion. We're not talking about compromising the wajibat and the muharramat, the haram and the halal, la, 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 la. But we're talking about something that is not obligatory, but it's a cultural value. So when it comes to your personal happiness, you living in the United States in 2016, and a cultural value, obviously common sense tells you to go with that, which is gonna make you happy, as long as it does not displease our Rahman. So that's my advice, that's my nasiha. We ask Allah Azza to make you feel easy, you have to be patient, all right? Uh, and you have to be willing to sacrifice, all right? Either you can be miserable and make your father and uncle happy, either you can be miserable, make your mother and your aunts and everyone happy, or you can be happy and they can be displeased with you. But if they truly love you, and if they're truly concerned about you, why are they upset with you? My daughter, this is my daughter. I love my daughter, my baby girl. Why should I be upset because of what she doesn't want? That isn't haram, that's not going against the deen. So the true father and the true uncle is someone who looks after his daughter and the care and the, the good feelings and the well-being of his daughter before his own personal self. And that's well known. Your daughter who's 30 years old is no different than your daughter who's six years old. Your 10 year old daughter is no different than an 18 year old daughter. I have enough money to buy my daughter a sandwich or buy myself a sandwich. I have enough money to make my daughter happy to make me happy. I'll go through a hardship and a difficulty just to make my little baby girl smile. That's the true father in this land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best.